What's up guys, it's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about keyboard shortcuts in Darktable. Where to find them, how to change them in case you want to, and my personal favorites. Ready? Let's get started. First of all, I want to say I am so, so sorry that it has been about a month now since I have put out any new content. Our family got COVID, but we're back and I am so glad to be back here with you guys. I have missed you. So anyways, today we're going to talk about keyboard shortcuts. So I spent a lot of time when I first started in Darktable trying to find keyboard shortcuts and just like guessing around at what the shortcuts might be and messing up a lot of my photos and breaking stuff. So I don't want that for you guys and I don't want you to have to look for them. So I'm putting them all right here in one spot. We're here in Darktable and I've got the Lighttable module pulled up right now. One thing that you will notice is there are three different kinds of shortcuts that exist in Darktable. First, you're going to have global shortcuts, which are shortcuts that work whether you're in the Lighttable module up here or whether you're in the Darkroom module over here. Those global shortcuts are going to be things like Control plus the letter Z to undo a previous edit or to undo something that you've done before, hitting the escape key to go out of a full screen menu, that kind of thing. Then you have some shortcuts that only work in light table, and then you have some shortcuts that only work in Darkroom. There is also the ability to set your own shortcuts, which I'm going to show you guys at the end. So if you're interested in setting your own keyboard shortcuts, make sure you watch all the way to the end of this video because that is definitely worth having. I've gone through and set a couple keyboard shortcuts for myself and they are very helpful. So first thing, I'm going to show you guys how to get to an actual menu that lists all of the keyboard shortcuts that are available right now. And this is going to save your butt if you can't remember what the keyboard shortcuts are or you don't have this video pulled up. What you can do to pull up that menu is just to hold down the letter H. I remember it like H for help. And this massive list pops up with all of the keyboard shortcuts that are available. So because I'm in the light table module, here are all of the light table shortcuts. And over here are all of the global shortcuts. These are the ones we talked about a minute ago that work whether you're in light table or in darkroom. And you can see there are mostly shortcuts just to either move from light table view, which is just pressing the letter L, or to darkroom view, which is pressing the letter D. That's a quick way to switch back and forth between those two modules. And then you have a whole bunch here that are light table specific. One other thing that I find really helpful is if you click this little box over here on this side. Now again, I'm holding down the letter H for this whole process because if I let go of it, it disappears. <laughs> So hold down the letter H and if you click this little box over here to the side, it actually pops this screen out in its own window. You can make it smaller too if you want to, but you can actually just kind of keep it over here to the side in case you need to refer to it again. Really quickly, I will tell you my favorite keyboard shortcuts for the light table module, which is where we are right now. The ones that I use the most are the numbers one through five, which are the numbers that set the star ratings for each photo. So you can see here, each photo has a set of stars underneath of it. If you press the number one, it gives that photo one star, two gives the photo two stars, and on all the way up to five. So that's definitely one of the most frequently used shortcuts for me is when I'm going through trying to cull my photos, I give them all a star rating between one to five so that I can decide if it's a photo I want to keep or a photo I want to get rid of. And if you guys haven't seen that video already, I'm going to put a link to it in the upper right hand corner here so you can go back and watch that if you want. It's a whole video that I did on how I go through and cull my photos when I import them. So how I decide which ones I want to keep, which ones I want to get rid of. The next shortcut that I use kind of in conjunction with this is when I have a photo that I want to mark as a rejected photo. Let's say this photo right here is one I know I'm never going to use again and I don't really like it, but I'm not quite ready to delete it because I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough good photos to hand a client or whatever the reason may be. You can just hit the letter R to mark it as a reject. You can see it puts a little X in the bottom left hand corner and it marks it as rejected and takes away all the stars that may have been listed with it. Now if you want to undo this action, say you hit R and you don't really want to reject that photo, you can just tap it again and it'll put back whatever stars you had on the photo to start with. The same thing goes for the star ratings. If you have a star rating on there and you don't want one on there, you can just hit the number zero instead and it'll remove all the stars or you can just press a different number and it'll take you to that number of stars. 
The other thing that I use all the time when I'm editing photos in this stage of the process is color tags. These work similarly to the star ratings. So you basically have five colors to choose from and you can put a color tag on a photo to help you remember to come back to it later on. I use these to sort out what photos I'm going to share with a client, what photos need to go in a sneak peek on Facebook, what photos I need to put on Instagram, and each one gets a different color. F1 is the color tag for the color red, and you can see on this photo here, it puts a red dot in the bottom right hand corner. F2 is yellow, F3 is green, F4 is blue, and F5 is purple. And you can see that you can add more than one color tag to a photo. So if this is a photo that I want to go on Instagram, but I also want it to go on a Facebook sneak peek, I can do two colors on this photo. If you want to remove the color tag, all you have to do is tap that button again. So if I want to remove the red, I'll tap F1 again. If I want to remove yellow, it's F2, F3 for green, F4 for blue, and F5 for purple. So those are the main keyboard shortcuts that I use when I'm in light table mode. The other thing you can do to check focus or to see a photo enlarged is to hold down the W button. Sometimes it takes it a second to show up, so just hold it down and be patient. But you can hold down the W and it'll pull up your photo in full screen and you can kind of see if it's one that you may want to keep or one that you want to get rid of. Okay, so the other thing you can do is hold down the control key and the letter W to see which areas of a photo are in focus. It's going to pull up these little boxes that are going to show you which areas you have focused on. The only thing I will warn you about is that the letter Q is right beside the letter W on your keyboard. And if you accidentally hit control Q, it will quit dark table and you'll have to start over. That happened to a friend of mine. Just kidding. It happened to me just now and it was annoying. So just so you know, control Q quits. So watch out for that one. You can also turn on focus peaking by hitting control shift and the letter F. This is also a quick way to see at a glance what areas of your photos are in focus. The green, yellow, and blue are the items in focus and then the rest obviously is not as in focus. Sometimes on my photos it has a tendency to pick up areas where there's really high contrast. So something really dark against a white background like parts of this logo or his pin that's on his white shirt. Sometimes those pick up even though when I zoom in to the photo, they aren't necessarily the most in focus thing. So I have some trouble with this one, but at least it does help me tell at a glance, like, okay, I at least have part of this guy in focus and he was my main focus in this frame. So we're probably okay. You can turn that back off by hitting control shift and the letter F again. Another keyboard shortcut that you can use in the light table module is control plus the letter T. This gives you the option to enter a tag down here at the bottom. It's a really quick way to just start typing in a tag. I could type in golf or whatever and just hit enter and it adds that tag to that photo. If you wanted to select all of these photos, you can hit control plus the letter A and it'll select all the photos that you have pulled up here. Then you can also hit control T and add a tag to every photo that you have in here. Let's say I wanted to add golf to all of these. Ta-da! Now all of those photos have been marked with the tag golf. There it is. Now let's go over to the darkroom module. All right, we've got this photo pulled up. Let's go over some of my favorite shortcuts to use in the darkroom section. Most of these are like control plus another letter as well, but it is super helpful when you have a lot of edits that you need to make to a bunch of different photos to be able to do control C and control V and copy and paste your edits from one photo to another. So that brings me to my first one, control C. So if I made edits to this photo, let's say I did some color correction and and I'm just gonna make it look really bad, it doesn't matter. But let's say I wanted to take this edit that I just did, I hit Control plus the letter C, and then I wanted to copy that edit on another photo. So I can then click on the new photo that I wanna paste those edits on, hit Control plus the letter V, and it will paste those edits onto this photo as well. Another thing that you can use in this module is Control plus the letter D. This duplicates the image. So if I have one image that I wanted to correct in color and then one that I wanted to correct in black and white, you can do that really easily easily just by hitting control D and it will make a copy of the image that you're working on and then you can make second edits to the new copy. I've already talked to you guys also in other videos about my very very favorite keyboard shortcut. This one saves my butt all the time. I think I talked about this one in 
the video where I went through and just edited a bunch of photos and let you guys kind of follow along with me and how I do those. Um, I'll put a link to that in the upper corner as well in case you guys want to check that one out. The keyboard shortcut that saves my butt all the freaking time is control plus the letter Z. Let's say I do some color correction. My computer took some time to process and I look back over and all of a sudden my image is totally green and I'm not sure how to fix it. Just hit control plus the letter Z and you can hit it again several times if you need to to undo all the way back to the image that you had before. And you can also do control Y to redo. So if I undo my edits and I undo too many, I can hit control Y to redo the last one that I took off. There are several other keyboard shortcuts that are really helpful. I'm not including them in this list because I don't use them as often, but they are listed right in here. That would be the brackets to increase and decrease brush size, brush hardness, brush opacity. You guys will use those if you're doing masks or spot removal kind of stuff. Anything where you have to draw a mask, these come in really handy without having to go in and click to change the brush size. And again, you guys can come back in and check this full list just by holding down on the letter H on your keyboard and you can see all the different options here. Two keyboard shortcuts that I really like using in the darkroom module are the spacebar and the backspace key. Spacebar moves to the next photo in the timeline that you may want to edit and backspace goes to the previous photo. And the very last keyboard shortcut that I use a lot in here is control plus the letter E which actually exports a photo. So the only problem with that is if you have a specific folder that you want to put that photo in or if you want to export more than one photo at a time. It's usually easier if you come back to the like table module and do that from there. And if you guys don't know how to export photos or you need a tutorial on that, I have a great one. I will link that in the upper corner as well. And you guys can go check that out. Um, it's all about how to import and export multiple file type in Darktable. Okay, so at the beginning of this video, I promised that if you wanted to see how to make your own keyboard shortcuts or how to change them around, I would show you how to do that as well. All you're gonna do is come over here to this little cog wheel that says show global preferences. Click on that bad boy and then over on the left hand side you have something called shortcuts. Click on that and then this actually gives you a tree that you can expand that shows every kind of operation you could possibly want to do in Darktable and what the keyboard shortcut is for it off to the side. Now the caveat is if you try to enter a keyboard shortcut that already exists somewhere, Darktable will give you a warning saying hey this is already a global shortcut, it already exists here, are you sure you want to change it. If you hit yes, it's going to overwrite the shortcut that Darktable has already put in. So just make sure you pay attention to those little pop-ups. All right, so to set a keyboard shortcut, all you need to do is double click on whatever it is that you're wanting to set a shortcut for. Let's say I want to make a preferences shortcut to open the preferences window by hitting a key on the keyboard. All I have to do is double click this and it gives me a note over here to the side to press the key combination that I want to use to open preferences. In this case, I'm just going to use a key that I know is not mapped anywhere else. So I'm going to go with a number eight. And then if you click anywhere else, it saves that keyboard shortcut. What if I decide I don't actually like the number eight to be my shortcut and I want to get rid of it? If you try to double click it again, it just gives you the option to press another key combination. And if I try to hit backspace to get rid of that message, it tells me backspace is already assigned to another shortcut. Do I want to replace it? No, that's not what I'm trying to do. So make sure when you go to get rid of a keyboard shortcut, click on it one time just so it's highlighted and then press backspace. It should delete it. All right, so just remember reprogram at your own risk. But if you want to or need to rearrange your shortcuts, you can do it this way pretty quickly and painlessly. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell notification so you get notified when I put out new videos. Also, don't forget to smash that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.